Marion has been an inspiration to me pretty much since I've known her, just because she is a great geneticist. She is really one of the leading geneticists of her generation. I think she sets a great example for how to do science. I think that she not only broke barriers in terms of the actual discoveries, which were amazing, but that she also, in her own way, broke barriers for women in science and for other people in science who didn't necessarily want to feel that they had to become something different. She has an incredible curiosity about the natural world, um, and uh, she's penetratingly smart. The two people who influenced me most were my parents. And my mother, when she got married and had me, became a homemaker. This was the 50s. And she was really well educated, and I realized that she would have been a lot happier if she'd had a career, so I knew I wanted to have a career early on. And my father was a physicist, so he always encouraged my interest in science, although he was not so sure science was a great career for a woman. At Harvard, I took science courses my first year and declared a major in biochemical sciences. But I'd never been in a lab, and I wasn't really sure what I would do if I became a scientist. And then my sophomore year, the Harvard Neurobiology Department decided to offer an undergraduate course, which I took. And that was just so exciting because they not only told us what was known about neurobiology, they also discussed the what wasn't known, the unanswered questions, and how one might go about answering them doing experiments. By the end of my time at Harvard, I realized I was interested in science at a molecular level. So I decided I should do my graduate work someplace where I would be able to pursue that. And Stanford was one of the really strong departments. So I applied to the biochemistry department. And I still remember my interview day because I went there and I just left thinking, oh, this would be such a terrific place to be a graduate student. Recombinant DNA was just being developed in the biochemistry department at that time. So it was really exciting. It opened the possibility of asking new questions that hadn't been accessible before. And there was an amazing group of people there. We were there 24 seven. There was always somebody in the department at the lab bench. And it was just a pretty amazing place to be. A lot of energy, a lot of interest in thinking about what were the important questions. Also about new directions one could take. I think what was unique about Stanford was the level of interaction among people. There was a very high standard for experimentation, both with respect to experimental design, execution, and also critical evaluation of the results. What could you really conclude from the experiments that you'd done? I first met Marion when she joined David Botstein's lab at MIT, where I was a graduate student. She was freshly arrived from her PhD at Stanford and she joined the lab. Marion made a strong impression quickly because she is very nice, very smart, very direct, and she had worked on Drosophila for her PhD. The Botstein lab at that time, people worked on either bacteriophage, which I worked on, or yeast. And we just asked her, are you gonna work on phage or yeast? And she looked at us with a typical Marion look and like, are you crazy? And she said, well, of course I'm gonna work on yeast. It would be too far a stretch for me to move down to phage. I think she used stronger language than that, but that was the effect of it. Marion's work to me is one of the outstanding examples of showing what model organism research can do. Marion has changed medical life science research by the discoveries that her lab has made, by understanding that SNF-1 is a kinase that's central to understanding metabolic stress, initially in yeast and now in humans, that it is something important during calorie deprivation, that it's something that's probably likely related to diabetes and obesity, that it is related to certain diseases and certain cancers. Her other research led to the discovery of switch sniff chromatin remodeling complexes, and that also is highly related to human disease and regulates gene expression in every eukaryote that's been studied so far. So the impact of her research is very, very wide reaching. I first met Marion when I was interviewing to be a graduate student at Columbia. Marion encouraged her trainees in a lot of different ways. One way was to really give us our own project and to expect from us to take ownership of our project. I thought that was really important. She had an incredibly 
comprehensive and systematic way of dealing with science writing. I still use it to teach to people in my lab. Marion once gave me a really tremendous, deep compliment, and I understood it immediately for the compliment that it was. When she looked up at my bench and saw my solutions and said, I would trust your solutions. I would use them. <laughs> I'm really grateful to have been a part of that discovery time. It was just amazing. In 2008, I began to think it was time in my career to have a somewhat broader role in science. I was at HHMI for a couple of years, and then I was called by somebody at the Simons Foundation, whom I'd known from Columbia, who asked if I was interested in going there to help with the Autism Research Initiative. I said yes. Um, I'd never done anything like that before. Jim and Marilyn Simons, who were leading the foundation, were interested in starting a program of multi-institutional, interdisciplinary collaborations of people addressing really hard problems. And the first one that they wanted to do was Origins of Life. And I thought that was pretty interesting, so I agreed to start that. And it involved molecular biologists, uh, chemists, geologists, astronomers, and it's now in its 10th year. The thing that is unusual about Marion is she was very open-minded about ocean ecology, whereas most of the people that come from molecular biology, which is what dominates MIT, think we're crazy to study things in the natural world because it's so complicated. The problems we work on are basically intractable <laughs> because it's so complex. I think of the oceans as sort of a living, breathing organism, the whole ocean. You know, there's exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide daily. It, it basically breathes as a collective living thing. So that's the big challenge is what role do the oceans play in the metabolism of the Earth? In these collaborations, we have people with very different expertise coming together and influencing one another to take new directions and also to synthesize their work to get a broader view of what's really a very complex set of ecosystems in the ocean. Marion was in yeast genetics at the height of exciting molecular biology. I call that the fast lane. And when I was coming up in marine ecology, it was the slow lane. <laughs> Before genomics hit oceanography, it was really hard to work on problems. But then when genomics hit, the barrier between molecular biology and ecology it got blurred. She went from the fast lane to funding the, the slow lane to make it faster. <laughs> Marion is a great choice for the Kornberg Berg Award because she is one of the outstanding geneticists of her generation. She's inspired many people. She's exemplified how you take a model organism, a basic area of research, and lead it into new areas of human biology and human disease. She has made tremendous contributions to basic research in biology and genetics and the biomedical sciences, but also made this transition to apply all of that knowledge and expertise to the field of environmental sciences. Marion's lifetime achievements in biomedical science have been so impactful. I can't think of anyone more deserving of the award. I think it would be hard to overstate the influence of Arthur Kornberg on this department. He started it, he moved it to Stanford, and he was chair for a long time, um, including when I got there. And he set a very high standard for the science done there. I had courses from him, and he was pretty rigorous in his demands of the students. At the end of my time there, he did something unexpected to support my career, which I will always remember. I had applied to David Botstein for a postdoctoral position. And when David accepted me, he said that he'd received uh, three very nice letters from members of my committee, but that he'd also heard from another faculty member. Uh, Arthur Kornberg had called him uh, to lend support for me. And that really meant a lot to me at the time, and it still does. I feel very honored to receive this award and Stanford and my training there are certainly responsible for much of the success that I've had in science. So I appreciate the opportunity 
to express my gratitude to both the department and the institution. <laughs>